I wasn't uh, aware of being Jewish, but when I came to the Van der Brinks, I got a new name, a new identity, a new family, and I became a Catholic instantly. And I learned the rosary, and I went to church, and I crossed myself. And there were holy water basins on the door jams of each bedroom. So, I mean, we dipped our hands in holy water. I was devout. It was a devout family, and God was watching not only my every action, but my every thought. God was in my head. It was a fearful kind of religion in those days, especially in Holland, because we didn't celebrate Christmas other than in a strictly Christian way. All Jewish children who went into hiding had a tendency to be very obedient and very quiet and not make waves. And somehow we knew that. So I was a very good little Catholic. The fact that I appeared suddenly in this town, in this household, must have been a source of constant fear. Your neighbors could turn you in. Those were days we lived with fear on a level that is not easily explained. So when I say they, they risk their lives every day, anyone could have turned them in at any time. And that's one reason they took their chances. They did it. They, they took me in. But they couldn't send me to public school. That would have raised a lot of questions. Church, I guess, wasn't an option. We did it. But I never got to go to school. I never learned to read or write. I'm going to tell you uh, a little about different ways of hiding. My hiding experience was true for me. Other children were also hidden. Some went from house to house. Many were abused physically, sexually. They were made into little slaves. I mean, there are horror stories about hiding. They didn't all get families like I was so incredibly fortunate. There wasn't always space. My hiding was what I personally call a kind of open hiding because Anne Frank comes to the minds of many people. Her story is so familiar. And she was in what I call a closed hiding, never to be seen or heard by anyone outside those walls. I could go outside at certain times, yet one of my brothers uh, used to think back and feel sorry for me that I didn't get to leave, come and go in the house as freely. I personally don't remember that. But other children were hidden either in very cramped quarters. Sometimes little babies were pushed into bureau drawers, just closed if there was a danger of being discovered. Um, others hid in barns, in, in haystacks. People were hiding in sewer systems in, in cities in Poland like Warsaw and Wojc but they were hiding behind artificial walls that were constructed. One of my friends was thrown into a coal bin in underneath all the coal at the age of two, hoping, his parents hoping he would be discovered in time because Germans would come and poke with bayonets. Um, other children were thrown out of moving trains when possible, uh, thinking that was no worse than certain death. And some frantic Jewish parents carrying infants had offered them to other people on the street or in the train station, just desperately. Hiding children were very good and very quiet and very well behaved, and sometimes when the money, some parents paid money to families to take their children. That's one of the very special qualities, again, about the Van der Brinks. They did not do this for money. But in too many cases, there was money involved, not only Holland, but especially in the East. 
And when money ran out, children got kicked out into the street. And there are some pretty awful stories about little children on the run and uh, feral children running in the woods. But since Holland didn't have caves and woods, we didn't have that kind of children on the run. That was Poland and Russia. After the war, I want to make it clear that in the case of child survivors, in a lot of cases, our lives fell apart at the end of, after the war, in the years afterwards. And I think for us, the toughest part of our lives was surviving survival. And my grandmother knew where I was, so we reunited eventually. I desperately wanted to stay with the Funda Brinks. But I went and lived with my beloved grandmother. And then before I knew it, I was told that we were going to America. I can easily respond to any questions about deniers and revisionists. Don't forget revisionists. And the Germans, we have the Germans to thank for the, the best argument to deniers and revisionists. They kept impeccable records. They were crazy for making all the details, all the numbers, all the timetables of the trains. That was a Germanic thing, all these details. And if that's not good enough for people, then we can thank General Eisenhower for having his soldiers document through film and still photography what they found in the camps. There are all sorts of records and I think this is a large reason that we survivors are speaking. And I, I can say to students, if, if you come across such people, tell them you've met me.